Hey guys, it's Dukonred1, and welcome back to episode 5 of How to Build a Fortified Manor, Chateau de Lumiere. That is the name that we have went with for this manor that we are building. Uh, if you guys are unaware, Chateau de Lumiere, Lumiere is French for Castle of Light. And so we came up with a banner design between episodes, and I'm pretty happy with the result. I feel like there could be a little bit more work on them. Uh, it'll probably be changing later in the episode or later in the series and such, but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I wanted the color in there. I wanted it to be bright. Obviously, since it's Chateau de Lumiere, it should be relatively bright. So this is what we came up with, and I'm going to show you really quick the process of which I d used in order to achieve these banners here. So this over here is the crazy amount of designing that went into trying to figure out this banner right here. I kind of liked this quite a bit, but the darker color just blent in too much or blended in too much. Um, that was my, that was the drawback about that. And you know, I, these were the first ones I came up with right here trying to figure out a design, but I didn't like the checkered pattern and stuff like that. I kind of liked this one right here, but I don't know. I might decide actually to go with that one because I kind of like the yellow and things, but we'll see what happens. But yeah, that's what we came up with and it took a while to figure out those patterns and everything. But this for now is our banner and it might change later on in the series. So there's been a few changes to the gate house itself. We added on a porch to the back. We rearranged the windows. We added on these shutters. I thought that was a necessary thing. Also, instead of having arrow slits on the back, we actually added in latticed windows that I think that look quite nice instead of those very dull looking arrow slits because we have the arrow slits on the front. Obviously, there would need to be arrow slits on the front because this is where all the defending needs to happen but I decided that it would be best to add in the windows on the sides because I think that that looks far better than not uh, than not having the windows. Uh, but yeah, the porch has some cross work or cross beams in order to keep it sturdy. We added in these little in insets, these little uh, yeah, these little insets where the the doors are so that when you walk in it's not just like a flat door it looks a little bit better there's been a few changes on the inside I'm not sure if you guys are noticing them from the last episode a few little texture changes we've also added in more detail to this room the buttons along the top rim I think that looks nice obviously the banners is a change and then you come into here this is a little bit changed in there um, but yeah there's there's really not too much let's different there things like that and then you can walk back out on the porch like this here would most likely be used for say if the captain of the guard is yelling for the guards down here you know to, for orders or you know telling them orders and they can't really hear in here so they go out into the porch and say captain um somebody's here or if something's going on and then the captain would go all right let them in or something and then they would come over here and open up the portcullis or yell down to the guard down there who's operating the swing gate whatever is going on with that but I thought that would be a pretty cool idea having some sort of balcony back there but what we're going to be working on is a bell tower today this right here is going to be the center point of the manor right there so when you walk in through the front gate you're going to look straight up at this big old bell tower that's going to be rather intimidating as you walk in because it's going to have lots of arrow slits it's going to be very defensible things like that the bottom is going to be a dungeon and things um things like that but also one thing i really want to tell you guys is i have a pinterest where you guys can find a ton of inspiration because that's where i'm coming up with ideas for this bell tower as i found several pictures just like i worked just like i did on the the gate here i came up i found a bunch of pictures that we're going to be using to uh, as inspiration for this bell tower as we're building it this episode. So um, if you guys want to find all that inspiration for yourself, it's all over on my Pinterest. It is linked in the description below. Just got to find it. So these are the rooms that I want to have in this tower here. I want there to be a guard bunk room, a captain of the guards room, a captain of the guards office an armory, a dining room slash fireplace. It'll be like a recreation room in there. And then there's probably only going to be one fireplace. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. There's going to be a chamber pot, a dungeon, 
torture room and a bell tower or bell at the top so but yeah there's also going to be cells in accordance to nobility so like the the lordly cells would be towards the top so like in medieval times there was an honor system so if you were royal or notable of blood you would be treated better than say a peasant or a normal soldier etc or like a knight would be treated better same thing uh, but yeah that they would be higher up and then maybe they'd even have a window into their cell whereas the other cells down below would probably be more dark and such so um, but yeah the bell tower is going to be right here i'm kind of planning on having a turret right here or a um, a bartisan. If you guys don't know what a bartisan is, uh, that's technically what this is over here. See, a turret would go all the way down to the ground, whereas a bartisan, like, starts halfway up, overhanging corner turret. So this is a bartisan actually versus a being a turret. Well, it is a turret technically, but it's a the official term is a bartisan, and we'll probably do the same thing here. But I'm not sure if the turret's going to go all the way to the ground or if it's going to start midway up, but we'll see. And um, But yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. I think it's going to turn out rather nice. This will be the entrance into the, the dungeons down here. Probably it's just going to be a one a one block entrance, like a you know just a normal door there. I think that'll be plenty enough for our entrance into the dungeon, uh, stuff like that. So... But yeah, I'm pretty happy with the results so far. Uh, there's a few things I want to tell you guys. Is This right here is a finial. If you guys are unaware of that, the spiky, artsy bits that are placed, um, they're basically like stone, stone artistic mounts on top of crinials. That's what these are right here. All these little, uh, I'm sorry, merlins. These are merlins. The crinials are the, um, the insets and the, uh, crin the merlins are the outsets. So that's like this is a this is a Merlin right here, and this is a cranial, and then these are machicolations and yeah, such like that. And then underneath are corbels. If you guys are not aware, is these stones that are holding up the machicolations are corbels. Um, yeah, so that's your technical terms for the day. Uh, I'm sure that later in this series we'll be speaking about other technical terms too. So, uh, or we you know we'll add in some more. But yeah, I'm really happy with this. I'm looking forward to adding in more detail and more things in general. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started and let's get this bell tower done. So starting out, we're going to be building the main walls for this thing. We're going to be using the purple wool and yellow wool. The purple wool is obviously for the walls and again, very important. The walls are too thick. That's so that you can have interior blocks and exterior blocks. And also it's very realistic uh, in terms of support structure. So I am using the yellow wool as the floor plan. And usually I like to have five blocks of space between each floor on something of this, of this magnitude, of this size. So building up the roof, I want it to be another one of those hip roofs. The hip roofs where they, all the uh, corners of the roof condense into one apex in the middle. Um, so yeah, the bartisans there to the right, that hanging tower, and this balcony here, we push it out, the whole wall out. So now it's three thick on that side. Not only does that, again, help for the support structure, but it also makes it so that we don't have to have this really like weird looking balcony over overhanging. Now it sort of looks like it's it fits there. So we're working on the battlements right now. Uh, we're going with the, the basic, the same sort of design we used for the gatehouse being that it's the, the travertine bricks for the battlements and then the diorite brick for the actual structure itself. And it turns out pretty good. And then there we go, we're placing in the windows. You'll also notice the windows aren't one on top of each other. That adds a repetitive look. You wanna to try to make sure that even in something symmetrical that there is asymmetry. Very important, and it makes things look a whole lot better. And as you can see on the back side, there's those two by three windows, the larger windows overlooking. It looks pretty cool, especially the view once we get that sorted out, once we get the terrain worked out. So we're adding in the gradient right now. As you can see at the bottom, we've added in that cobble, the dark sandstone, things like that it really helps the overall look. It really contrasts with the diorite and with the lighter, the limestone look of the entire tower. And uh, so yeah, 
we actually go and build these art these ornamental sections here at the top you'll see that I add in those gold blocks I think that those in the end look really nice especially with what we did with them uh, the finials on the top the ornamental you know style in general I think really makes Lumiere pop you know it really makes it stand out and looks great so that I was struggling with figuring out what I wanted to do with that Bardison, but I finally decided to use the white. I think that looks pretty good. And then I decided I want to make a balcony there, not only for uh, you know all intents and purposes, you know the purpose of having it over the walkway on the way up, but also that it would be a nice little uh, porch to you know it adds contrast, uh, you know with the red roof and everything. So that looks nice. So again, I'm just kind of adding in details, working on features, figuring out what to do. I'm working on the Bardison again and trying to sort out texturing and figuring out what details could be added in to make it more, make it more fluent with the build, to make it feel like it actually fits there. So we're adding in arrow slits right now at the bottom, and then I also changed the roof of the balcony to red. I think that looks a whole lot better. It adds, again, more of a contrast value, which is important, again, in a build. Uh, you don't want to make it unrealistic, uh, you know, unrealistic contrast. You want to make it look nice, and that's, that's really what I was trying to do there. And again, we're working on those ornamental sections on the top, and then uh, we continue from there. So I didn't like how those corner stone bits looked, so I instead am building them into Belvederes. Belvederes, they are the corner turrets. Now later in the video I call them Bardisons, but they're actually called Belvederes. They are uh, little corner pavilions or turrets, raised turrets on the corners of the build. They are defensively set so that you can sort of shoot down and have more of a, you can like, shoot downwards and inwards on uh, the enemy. So now we're heading into the interior of the tower. We're gonna start off with the guards dining room. Now, throughout this time lapse, we do get a lot done. However, even after the time lapse, there's still more to be, you know, I change a lot between recordings and we'll go through and explore later on in this, uh, this video and show you guys exactly what I had done and changed. So I wanted to add a table that was even, so that's why I made the walls even. I moved that one wall out, and I think it turned out pretty good. There's some asymmetry in this room with the fireplace and everything. Uh, I really like the idea of adding in those birch trap doors to sort of represent a plastered roof. I think that looks pretty neat, and also adds in that contrast. Thought that was a really cool idea. And then we use those dark oak doors, as you can see along the walls, as openings to, to the arrow slits and everything on the, the outside. Because we don't want it to be drafty in here, we want to keep the heat inside. So now we're going to head out to the hallway that leads to the supply lift. That's where they would lift supplies up from the, the bailey when you walk right in through the gate. That's where they would lift it up. And then eventually we're going to be making, right where we're going over right now, a little trap door that goes down to the uh, the hold or the supply room underneath. So this is going up the stairs and the Bardison. We're going now up to the captain of the guards room. Um, as far as positioning, I think I could have done better. I could have made this somewhere else, but I think in, in overall, I think it works really well. And I used some inspiration for this. I thought uh, I saw a room that had like a really like dark mahogany wood and then it had a lot of stone peeking through of the castle walls. And that's where I got my inspiration for it, and I think it really turned out quite nicely. The bed, I wanted to go with the Lumiere colors being red, yellow, and white, and then we added a little bit of orange later on. But um, yeah, the fireplace with the tile, I think that looked great. We added in a little office area for them, um, that little chamber pot in the wall that you'll see in the back there, um, the dresser, things like that really thought you know you kind of when you're building interiors you really want to think about what they need what they would have you want to make it so that their life is relatively comfortable depending on their status and what exactly they they would need in that general sense so that's really what we try to do so again we're going back up the bartison and this leads up to the guards room up here i first start out by adding in plaster the bell chain and then we roof it in or you know we make the ceiling and we'll definitely add more detail to that later on 
So we make beds for for 12 guards up here. I wanted 16, but I couldn't realistically fit the 16 guards in here. So I just decided to leave it at 12. And then uh, we add that fireplace. We make sure the fireplace is off because the windows are open when it makes sense, right? Um, but as you can see now, the roof is a little bit more supported and detailed. Looks great in my opinion. And then, um, yeah. So now we're gonna head up to the bell tower floor. So this is where the bell is going to be built. And I'm really happy with the system that we were able to devise. I really like that, uh, I feel like it really works. Um, now the bell is pretty big, so if it swung too wide, it could possibly smash down this whole top part of the tower. Uh, the whole monitor of the tower but hey um maybe there's some system in there to keep it from slight or from swinging too far but i really like the system it's supported it seems good it makes sense and i explain it later on in the video so we're adding in those cages to keep out the pigeons and the birds and bell towers you'll notice that sometimes they have cages like that or like um, what do you call them like shutters things things of that sort in order to keep out the birds because you don't want birds in your bell tower they'll poop everywhere but I strategically placed that one behind the chimney you won't be able to see that from the outside um, but I strategically do that so that you can get inside the bell tower from the top when you're exploring the build or even get out um, so you won't notice it on the outside but you will notice on the inside so now it is dungeon time we're heading down into the depths of Lumiere now later on we may add in because uh, in the lore there is that idea of having something of a elven ruins underneath so we'll figure that out later on most likely maybe a video of its own but right here you'll see that I have those two windows in the wall below those arrow slits those are the windows for the dun or for the the cells for nobility or the knights that would possibly be held here in Lumiere because um, again nobility would have a you know special special cells you know there was there was that honor code and everything in the medieval times and then they even have their own beds now that is royalty um, so this right here is going to be the storeroom that we're going to be building this is where the all the food stuffs and supplies and things of that sort would be would be uh, placed because obviously a guard tower guards would need food guards would need supplies things like that and that's what we do in here and I think it turned out pretty good and again we're gonna explore all this later on and sort of show you guys what's going on and um, see all the neat little details and stuff but as we're building I'm trying to think defensively I'm trying to think you know when you're in a dungeon what all should be down there I like the doors because there really isn't any like sturdy door that has like a caged top that you can see into the cell because that's pretty important when you're in a prison you know prison cells should be relatively visible from the you know the hallway so the guards can see so you'll see that I cleared a space right underneath here which makes sense because right above is going to be more of a building so you don't want the dungeons to be too unrealistically set you know you don't want them really dug down into the ground it's possible of course but you know this this looks like it could have been built from you know maybe it was just like dug into the earth and then they built it cells and then they covered it from above but again we're using the sandstone and everything I'm building three cells like those are three cells for say peasants or um, lower people that you know maybe the lords of the Lord of Lumiere doesn't like and he wants you know them to rot in a cell and then we make a little torture table things like that lots of little details like that and uh, but yeah that's pretty much it and I hope you guys learned something I hope that I was able to inform you properly on the occurrences so built before you is the Chateau de Lumiere bell tower very happy with the result uh, definitely has everything that I really wanted in it there was a few things that I didn't have like uh, the bunk room only has room for 12 guards. The captain of the guards office, uh, I want it to be a public office, so we'll have to build that elsewhere. He does have a private office though. And then uh, I wasn't able to do the armory, but the armory is in the side of the gatehouse anyway. So, or maybe that'll just be one of the armories, I don't know. But yeah, I'm really happy with the design as we go around the outside. I really like how it turned out and it makes sense on the inside. So let's, without any further like, fooling around let's go ahead and get right to this so this is the cesspit there's a pretty much like a tube or a 
purposely built hole that goes all the way up to the top of the tower where the people from inside can, you know, poop or throw their garbage down and would all go down this hole to this barrel. And so then the servants would come and exchange that barrel out every so often. These are the windows for the dungeon cells for the nobility. Uh, so we're gonna actually gonna go see the dungeons first. But uh, this is going to be the entrance to the dungeon right there. And when you come in, see this is all going to be underneath the building. Uh, this is gonna be an arched building right here, which I think will look really cool. I'm really excited about this quite a bit. I think this will look really nice in here, like a uh, some kind of stone arch in here. I don't know, we'll figure that out. And then right underneath here is where the dungeon is built. So we're gonna go inside now. So this right here is a storeroom. This is where they would store like firewood, some amenities, you know, like barrels of food possibly, maybe some drinks or maybe even barrels of meat. Things of that sort would be in here. Um, maybe like, you, do, you guys be creative. There's a lot of different things that you could store in here. These are doors to keep the air or keep it from being drafty. So all of these open up to the arrow slits overlooking the the um, the front ward or the, the bailey right here, looking out towards that so that the archers from inside here can shoot down. You wanna maximize the defense and so the more arrow slits, the better, uh, as long as structural integrity is kept in mind. So this right here is the rope that leads down so that you can back a cart up and bring cargo up. This is the system in order to operate that. The rope goes through one of the pot log holes the pot log holes are for um, bars or such, like when the keep was being built, they'd had to build scaffolding to keep um, getting higher and higher, so that's what was done. So anyways, they would bring the cargo up, they'd bring it in here, and then they would gently let it down into here, and then that's how they would get cargo into the bell tower here, the guard's tower. So we're gonna actually head down now into the dungeon. I put this separation here purposely so that if, say, if there was a prison revolt, that it would be more difficult for the prisoners to get out. I imagine that this could be barred from the outside as well and things like that. This right down here is a grate, another door to add a layer of defense that could be closed. So this is one of the cells. You can imagine like a knight would be probably placed in here depending on uh, maybe there was a rivalry with a, a neighboring lord and maybe they captured one of the neighboring lord's sons. They would probably be in one of these cells as you can see. But yeah, they have their own windows. Whereas if we go deeper into the dungeons down here, they do not have windows. This is darker and drearier. So one thing that I was actually thinking, and I've been thinking recently, is in the lore, there's supposed to be elven ruins under here. So maybe later on what we can do I think that'll be a video of its own. Once we get more of these cellars and things done, we'll probably start adding in what looks like um, the foundations to elven ruins or old buildings and things like that. I think that would look really neat underground. Maybe like a secret door to get into them or some secret ways down. Stuff like that I think would be really neat. So anyways, down here we have a stretching table. This is where the um, if they had to interrogate someone, they would pretty much pull them apart, but uh, this Chateau de Lumiere isn't supposed to be known for cruelty, cruelty, but it is here in case that it's needed, maybe from an old lord or something. I just still need to really develop the lore of this place, but uh, yeah, that's that. So we're gonna now make our way up. So the only way to get from here officially up to the main tower is you gotta go up here to the inner ward or the inner courtyard. You can imagine there being a lot of greenery in here. It's gonna look really nice eventually. Maybe a little pool of water, something like that. I think that would look really cool. So this is the main stair that leads up to the, the tower. As you can see, you walk in, you're greeted with a hallway. You can either go left or you can go right. Right goes to the Barterson and the stairway up. And then left takes you to the cargo lift entrance or the supply entrance. And then it also leads to the guard's dining room. This is a one long bench right here that can be scooted under the table or whatever. And uh, I really like how that turned out. Pretty happy with this result. 
Um, there isn't really, I mean, I guess the, the ceiling's a neat design using the birch for plaster. I thought that would be a pretty cool idea. It adds in a neat contrast, works well. Again, the shaders are messing up the banners, so that's kind of silly. Got a little window here, allowing a little bit of skylight. And then again, you have all these doors to open up to the arrow slits on the outside. And this is a guard robe. Again, that goes to the poop chute, which leads down to the cesspit that we had seen earlier in the video. Some firewood there for the fireplace. I like how the fireplace turned out. And again, more of those. So that's the dining room. Now we are going to head up a little bit more. This leads to the bartisan. You'll notice that the stairway goes clockwise the one way up, like I said in the last video. The reason why this is done this way is so that the defenders are usually right-handed and they can defend easier and then the attackers are usually right-handed as well and it would be difficult to swing your sword right-handed around the side. Um, I'm sure you guys are familiar with how awkward it is using your opposite hand. So this here is a balcony looking out over the feast hall. It'll have a nice view, place where the captain of the guard can sit and enjoy the day. This is the captain of the guard's room in here. I thought it would be a good idea and I really wanted to make it look grand. I want all the rooms, like all the personal rooms to look grand in this, this place. And I really think I achieved that with this room. Now the colors are yellow and red. That is the colors of Lumiere, yellow and red. As you guys saw with the banner, which is right here, yellow, red, and orange, and a little bit of white. So anyways, that's okay. We got some white pillows and orange. Uh, I guess we don't have any orange. I guess that's orange right there, so whatever. So this here is a fireplace, like that quite a bit. Keeps the room warm, a wardrobe here on the wall. He has his own crossbow right here, so say if he gets surprised in the middle of the night, he can just come over, grab his crossbow, and shoot whoever is trying to surprise him. This little personal place to read and do official Captain of the Guard's business. Um, this is pretty much the only way to represent this, but I was like thinking of this like being one of those like metal bass with a with like legs underneath. Now he's not supposed to seek you know have any audiences in this room, so this door would normally be closed. So there's not really any need for open space for like people to come in and do stuff. But yeah, anyways, uh, there's a bath right there. This is his chamber pot. Thought that would be pretty cool. In fact, you know what'd be cooler for this right here? What if we went ahead and grabbed one of those pots, which is right here, and we'll go ahead and take that, put you there, and we need that wooden bench again right there. I think that looks a little bit better uh, than the chamber pot. It looks a little less, like, it looks a little less bulky, and also it looks like you can sit your butt on there without falling in. So yeah, a little armor stand, mirror, and I really like this balcony out here. He can overlook the gatehouse. He can yell orders over here. The guards that are manning the gate can come out to that balcony and he can say, lift the poor, close the gate or let them in. Like, or say, they can say, John from Elderwood is here. And he can say, all right, let him in kind of thing. So that is pretty cool. I like that balcony. Also can be used defensively if need arise. So this, I really like this right here. This is the top of the Bartison, the corner tower that hangs out the corner, which is pretty self-explanatory. But I really like this cathedral style ceiling in here. Very tall, very grand, very open. I love it. I think that really works. This is where all the guards would sleep. There's room for 12 guards here. And then there's room on above the gatehouse for two, three, four, five, six. There's six guards above there. So in total, we have about 18 guards here, which uh, I think works. I'm not, it's not too shabby. I'm sure we'll add in some more places for guards later on as well. But uh, yeah, there's lots of stuff here. Big open windows, a little fireplace over here that's off. Wouldn't make sense to have a fireplace going if the windows are open. So that's why I did that. Still need to detail that in that corner, remove that because um, I was gonna put the garter robe over there, but it made more sense to have it in this corner. So yep, that's the garter robe that goes down. And again, this is where they would poop and stuff down the side. But uh, I really like the ceiling in here. I want to take note of that. thought that was a pretty cool idea to have it sort of cross-beamed and very supported because above is the bell, and if the bell would, for some reason, snap or something, then this hopefully would hold it up. Um, at least that's the idea. 
and I like it in here. That's pretty much everything there is to say. This is the rope that they would use to uh, make the bell toil or bell make sound, the bell ring. There we go. That sounds more English-like. Uh, but yeah, we'll go up here. So that's how they would pull it down, lift it up, or pull it down, let it go. So the idea about this is it was it's just a very analog system. So they pull it down, and then the whole thing would sort of turn this way, and then they let it go and it go back. And this the bell is on a hinge, as you can see, and the hinge would sort of swing back and forth, back and forth. And then there would be obviously some system in here to make sure that this massive bell doesn't crash into the side and collapse the whole tower, because that would be sad we like this tower don't we these out here all these little cage bits are used to keep out pigeons and birds from making nests inside the the bell tower that would be um yeah not good some spider webs up here because i thought it needs some detail which i think works out and then we have some spears and miscellaneous weaponry and things like that up here that i think work out pretty well but yeah, overall, pretty happy with that. You come outside, you got these, I'm not even sure what these would be called. I'm just gonna call them, uh, I'm just gonna call them Bartisans because they're turrets on the corners. They're overhanging turrets on the corners of the building. So that just kind of fits what it is, but yeah. Um, uh, the chimney that goes all the way down, um, it's just sort of implied, but the chimney goes all the way down. That's where all the fire and or all the smoke from all the fires comes out but yeah that is the chateau de lumiere bell tower really happy with that next episode we are going to be splitting it up uh, versus this episode was probably 30 minutes or so and i want to try to avoid that long length of video so uh, we're going to shorten it next time and it's going to be the interior or the exterior in one video and the interior in the other video so that we can make these episodes a little shorter but yeah Hope you guys enjoyed the the, uh, the video, and I hope you guys are enjoying the series. Uh, if you like the video, please don't forget to like, hit that like button. Don't forget to comment and subscribe if you're not already, because uh, there's more of this coming in the future. And then also, if you have a, uh, a Facebook or, or a Twitter, follow me on either of those. The links are in the description. I also have a Twitch that I live stream on, so feel free to follow me over there. And then I also have a Patreon if any of you want to support me monetarily. Thank you so much for your support, guys. I look forward to our next one. Till then, uh, bye bye